uh, Anne Moreau, uh, who's going to talk to us about arc spaces in vertex algebras. Okay, thank you very much for the invitation. Uh, I would like to thank Jethro for the very nice uh, lectures last week. And uh, this week, uh, the lecture will be about uh, arc spaces and vertex uh, algebras. So this will be a little bit more uh, geometric. And uh, more precisely, uh, the aim of this uh, series of lectures is will be to define geometric object uh, canonically attached to an arbitrary vertex algebra. And these uh, geometrical objects will provide uh, interesting invariants, and I will try to give some interesting uh, applications. Uh, today, uh, I will talk about uh, differential algebras and arc spaces. So this a priori has not so much to do with vertex algebras. So as an introduction, I would like to uh, motivate the topic by, giving, by drawing a kind of illustrating diagram that you can keep in mind uh, throughout the lectures. So I start with an arbitrary vertex algebra, B vertex algebra. So as we will see uh, probably on Wednesday, V is canonically filtered by the Lie filtration. So I will give a precise definition in the next lecture. And uh, so we can consider the corresponding graded space. And so this will have naturally a vertex algebra structure, but moreover, it will be a commutative vertex algebra. So these are the simplest example of vertex algebras. So uh, Jethro didn't even mention this example because in fact, it turns out that you don't obtain a new structure because as we will see today, this is the same as a differential algebra. That is to say, for me, a commutative unital algebra together with a derivation. And um, so in particular, this is commutative. And so you can consider the corresponding scheme of this commutative algebra. And this will give an important invariant, interesting invariant for the uh, vertex algebra. And moreover, this actually has a richer structure of a Poisson vertex algebra. This we also will see probably uh, on Wednesday. So this is actually even a Poisson vertex algebra. So, Okay, I will give a precise definition, but you can think of it, uh, of it as a commutative vertex algebra together with a bunch of Poisson brackets with some compatibility conditions. All right, so this, uh, in fact, it is a Poisson uh, vertex scheme. All right, so this is interesting, but uh, it's not Noetherian, so it's not so easy to deal with this uh, scheme in general. However, there is another construction which associate to V a certain quotient that we usually denote by RV. We have already encountered this quotient in some lectures uh, in the conference two weeks ago. So, okay, it's a certain quotient here again, I don't define for the moment. But this quotient has naturally a Poisson algebra structure. Poisson algebra structure, and in general, it is of finite, uh, finitely generated. And we call this the ZUC2 algebra. associated with V. So here again, uh, this is in particular commutative, and here the scheme we obtain is in general of finite type. And this is what we call the associated scheme. And this will be a very important invariant for the vertex algebra, and we have seen, for instance, some application in suggest uh, seminar talk last week. 
Okay, and now, so this is a zoo C2 functor. And if you also apply this functor here, you, you get the same. So in other words, this part commutes. Okay, so, so now to, to, to complete the diagram, we have seen also last week at the end of uh, Jess Law's lecture that we can also construct the Zeus algebra. So the Zeus algebra here, it's a filtered associative unital algebra. And uh, as uh, Jesro explained, this algebra is very important to understand the representation theory of the vertex algebra. And uh, now, being filtered, you can also consider the corresponding graded algebra. And the result is commutative, and it is well known in this case that the uh, result has naturally a Poisson algebra structure. So here you go uh, again to the world of Poisson algebra. So in general, uh, these two Poisson algebras does not coincide, but they, they are uh, deep connections. And so these deep connections suggest a very, uh, the importance of this associated scheme in representation theory of V. And we will see some illustration of, of this. All right, so the idea is to study the geometry of this object to understand some interesting in properties of the vertex algebra. Okay, so this is very nice, but what is the connection with arc spaces? For the moment, there is no arcs in my uh, picture. So what is the connection? with arc spaces. So uh, given a scheme, let's say an affine scheme, to simplify, of finite type, over C, an arc, what we call an arc on X, is a formal curve on X. So that is to say, a morphism from the formal disk, so the spectrum of the ring of formal series, to X. All right, and now the, uh, what is the arc space? of X, it is a certain scheme, a scheme that I will denote by J infinity of X, whose C point are the arcs on X. So I will give a more precise definition, but this gives you a rough idea of what is this arc space is. Uh, arc space of uh, any uh, schemes. And uh, now um, the key point is that, uh, in fact, the structure shift of the arc space has not, uh, is a shift of differential algebras. So in particular, of commutative vertex algebra. So key point, the structure shift is a shift of differential algebra. So that is to say of commutative vertex algebra. And moreover, if X is Poisson, meaning that the corresponding coordinate ring is a Poisson algebra, then this is actually a sheaf of Poisson vertex algebras. Of course, we will uh, explain all this in, uh, during the lectures. Okay? And uh, so, 
together with V, I have two canonical Poisson vertex algebras. I have this one, but now I can also consider the coordinate ring of the arc space of the associated scheme. And here again, in general, these two does not coincide, uh, do not coincide, but they are strong connections. So these two objects will be important also. All right, so this is a motivation to, to study uh, differential algebras and also uh, arc spaces. Okay. Okay, so let me start uh, the first part about this. So I will start by commutative vertex algebra. So I would like to briefly explain this uh, correspondence. Any question for this? Okay, so part zero is about commutative vertex algebras and differential algebras. Okay, so as you can expect, we call a vertex algebra. So I'm keeping the notation of J through for the notation. Uh, so commutative if all fields associated uh, corresponding to element in V uh, commutes. So in other words, if you have this relation for any A, B, G. All right? So this is equivalent that all corresponding endomorphism commute for all A, B, and V, and all integer n. And uh, okay, these two equivalents are, uh, this first equivalence is clear. A little bit less trivial that I leave uh, as exercise is that this is equivalent to the fact that A and B is equal to zero for all A, B in V and all positive integer. All right? And this is obviously, maybe I can uh, write in terms of lambda bracket. This is equivalent to that. Okay, and this is clear. So only, uh, only this equivalence is non-trivial, so I leave as exercise. All right, so now I would like to say that the commutative a uh, vertex algebra is the same as a differential algebra. So this was observed by Borchert. And I can briefly explain. So proposition. A commutative vertex algebra is the same as a differential algebra. So here by differential algebra, I mean a commutative associative, of course, a commutative uh, unital C algebra together with the derivation. So let's say the algebra is uh, A. So this is a linear map as vector space, which satisfies the uh, Leibniz rules. All right. Okay. So so let's prove uh, the statement. So. Okay, so I start with a, a commutative vertex algebra as I, I want to define a differential algebra structure.
So in general, the normally ordered product is neither associative nor commutative, but with uh, this um, assumption, uh, in fact it is, and this is our product. So then I claim that V is a commutative algebra by, so the product, you take as product the normally ordered product, all right? And uh, it's not so easy to show the associativity, so I leave at exercise this, uh, uh, veri um, this verification. And uh, the unit is the vacuum. So exercise, uh, check the commutativity. and associativity. All right, and now the translation operators act as a derivation on it. And T act as a derivation. This is easier, but also you should, uh, you, you should verify uh, all statements. All right, so then I get a differential algebra. So conversely, Let's start with the differential algebra. So conversely, let a partial a differential algebra. Then I want to undo a uh, with a commutative vertex algebra structure, uh, then uh, I set for A in, uh, in A the corresponding series that I denote like this, and I mean by that so maybe it's better to apply to some element B. So you see that by construction, we have no uh, uh, negative endomorphism. So here again, ah, and maybe I should say that the translation operator is you just take the derivation. And for the unit, you take the vacuum. And here also, you should check that all uh, axiom of the vertex algebra is satisfied, that it is indeed commutative, but this is clear from these uh, equivalence. OK. so. And this is what I wanted to say about differential algebra, and this motivates the study of this. So now I'm going to give a definition of arc spaces through the viewpoint of differential algebra. So it will be slightly different than the definition I gave to start with uh, at the beginning, but then, of course, we will see that it is the same definition. But because of this, I start with this uh, viewpoint. All right. So. So then I want to explain the differential algebra construction of jet algebra. So I start with a lemma. So um, let R be a finitely generated uh, commutative uh, commutative C algebra. Then there exists a unique differential algebra that I denote by J infinity of R, called the jet algebra of R. Such that home of differential algebra in the category of differential algebra of jet 
here the jet algebra to any commutative C algebra is the same as the morphism in the category of algebra from R to A. So this is this must hold for any C algebra commutative C algebra. Okay, so in other words, this jet algebra satisfies the following uh, universal property. So in other words, so you, the unit, the identity morphism here provides a morphism from R to this jet algebra and which satisfies the following uh, universal properties that for any C algebra morphism from R to any differential algebra R, uh, A, here you have your morphism uh, J, morphism of algebra, so this is an algebra morphism. Then there is a map here that lifts uh, this function. All right, so let's prove the statement. So, so the unicity is clear by, by Yonedal, uh, Yoneda's lemma, or just uh, uh, using, uh, you can also prove the unicity directly using this property. So, unicity Okay, so let's prove the existence. Okay, so I start with the simplest case where R is a polynomial algebra. So first, assume R is just a polynomial ring. So then uh, it is what you can expect to define G infinity of R, I just consider the polynomial algebra is infinitely many variables. With the differential, with differential, which sends, so let's call it partial, and it sends a variable partial uh, J xi to partial J plus one Xi. Okay, so it's easy to verify that this algebra satisfies the uh, desired properties. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now let's consider, we can assume since uh, R is finitely generated, then R is a quotient of uh, such polynomial algebra. Uh, but first of all, maybe from the construction, I can define the embedding in this case. Sending xi to partial zero of xi, and from now on, I identify these variables to, to this in the jet algebra. Okay, so next. Yeah, so the conclusion is that this is a differential algebra, uh, does the job. Okay, so next, for the general ki uh, case, one can assume that R is a quotient, let's say uh, by some ideal, F1, Fr, 
And uh, then to define j infinity of R, I just consider the previous construction. And then I divide by all differential of these functions. And this is well defined because I view uh, these functions as element in R that I can embed into the jet algebra of this part uh, through this morphism. All right. So now it remains to show that this uh, it is well defined, and it is uh, it is well defined. I mean, uh, it is a differential algebra, and it satisfies the required property. So, so maybe here I should precise that here, uh, the I I viewed as element of the previous one. Through uh, the embedding R. Uh, J, all right? So, so now this, let's say this is I. So since I is a differential ideal, the quotient is a differential algebra. And, uh, okay, so I is a differential ideal. So this is indeed a differential algebra. And since, since it is the smallest uh, differential ideal containing the Fi, uh, this satisfies what we want. Hmm? Okay, so this concludes the proof, and uh, now uh, we define the jet, uh, the arc space of X for X uh, affine scheme of finite type, just to be the spectrum of this uh, jet algebra. Where R, of course, is the coordinate ring of my scheme. So now let X be an affine. So maybe I write B an affine scheme of finite type. Then we define, we set J infinity of X to be the spectrum of this Z jet algebra. Okay, so this is a definition for affine scheme. But now we would like to connect to the previous definition uh, I gave. So what we want is that the C point of this scheme, which is the same as morphism from spec C, to this scheme, which is still the same as homomorphism of algebra from J infinity of R to C. We would like that this is the same as morphism of algebra from R to the ring of formal series. So this is the question. We would like that this is the same And this is indeed the same as uh, arcs on X. Okay, so in fact, we have a more general uh, proposition. Is it okay? Uh, here? Here, scheme. Morphism of scheme. Yeah. And here also I can write... Uh, I can write like this, maybe. That's better. To connect to the definition, it's better to write like this. Yeah. So, so the point is this part, and we have the following proposition.
proposition uh, with the same assumption on R. So J infinity of R is a unique, of course, uh, as before, I did not mention, but it's up to isomorphism, uh, algebra. But here, care that it is about algebra, not differential algebra, uh, such that, so of course here I mean commutative, such that home of J infinity of R to any commutative C algebra A is the same as morphism of algebra from R to AT. All right, for any And in fact, you can, uh, this uh, algebra is characterized by this property. So you can also take this as, a prop of definition, as definition. Okay, so let's explain this. And then, of course, you, you have the expected statement. So, um, so let's start with an element here and define uh, an element here. So let alpha be a morphism of algebra between the jet algebra of R to A. And then I want to define, uh, I want to define, let's say, phi of alpha here. So how I will define uh, this? So I take an element in R, and then I take alpha, I can consider ET delta with a notation as before about commutative vertex algebras. Uh, so this is my notation for this element, and this is well defined because this belongs to the jet algebra, and f is in R. Okay, so the key point is that, in fact, if you have two elements in R, uh, this is equal to the product. So it is indeed an algebra morphism. So phi is well, uh, works, okay? It's a morphism of algebra, and uh, you, you have defined an element here, all right? So conversely, let's start with an element, let's say beta, in the right-hand side. So I want to say it's an algebra morphism. Okay, so conversely, so let beta an algebra homomorphism from R to this algebra, and then I define psi of beta here. So here it's enough to define on element generated by element of uh, R. I did not mention, but of course, the jet algebra of R is generated by R as a differential algebra. So it's enough to define on such element. And this I take as definition. I, I consider I have not so much choice. So beta is here. So I apply to F, and now I can differentiate this with respect to T and take the limit at T is equal to zero. And then this gives you an element in, uh, in uh, A. All right? And then now it remains to check. Uh, I leave as the exercise, but easy to check that they are converse each other. Right. 
So now the, the definition is connected to the geometrical definition. So I would like to uh, define some related objects. So, in fact, from the definition, we have that the jet algebra is the inductive limit of what I denote by Jm of R, where Jm of what R is what you expect, uh, is the algebra, is the subalgebra of the jet algebra of R generated by the first coordinate. So J uh, X I okay and the, the project uh, the inductive limit is taken with respect to the natural embedding through uh, these different uh, these uh, algebras. All right, and naturally, similarly to the previous statement, the C points of this uh, finite jet algebra is the same as point of X with respect to this polynomial ring. So I don't give the detail, it's very similar. But this, of course, is not anymore a differential algebra. Hmm? It's just an algebra. All right, and then we can consider the corresponding uh, scheme to respect to this, and this is what we call the m jet scheme. But here I'm still considering affine scheme. Maybe I can set uh, j m x to be the spectrum of this uh, finite jet algebra. So this is the m jet of x. So now together with this, uh, the natural embedding uh, like this, you have a trunca natural truncation morphism from, ah, sorry, maybe I prefer, from uh, jmx to J M X, so this is truncation morphism, and it uh, corresponds to the projection of uh, this above the same with N, okay? <laughs> and uh, in fact, you can write the arc space of X as a projective limit of the jet, uh, infinite jet uh, scheme with respect to this projection. Okay, so I think it's time for examples. So let me explain how to compute in practice the finite jet uh, scheme and uh, arc space for a concrete uh, affine scheme. So any question for the construction? So, for example, let's consider the affine scheme in uh, A3. Given by uh, this equation. Okay. So it's uh, so uh, is defined by this equation. So, um, as in the construction, I would like to introduce some notation that fits the vertex algebra setting. So, for A in my set of variables, so x, y, z, I denote by A minus g minus 1 the differential of uh, j, and I need to div divide by this for just normalization reason. And then uh, I can. Um, it follows from the definition, so uh, here I identify A minus 1 is identified with A, with this notation, and then the equation, so all the schemes I defined are also affine. I didn't mention, but it's clear from the definition. And so the equation 
of the arc of x embedded in the arcs of the corresponding uh, affine space uh, are given by the vanishing of the equation of this and you write formal series instead of uh, uh, variables and then you write the vanishing of coefficient. So uh, the equation of this are, uh, are given by the vanishing of the following uh, polynomials. So I can write like this. I write x minus 1. So this corresponds to x plus t x minus 2 plus t 2 uh, x minus 3, etc. Square plus Sorry, poly, uh, sorry, uh, power series, yeah, series. Yeah, sorry. Okay, so let's write the first equation. So here, so the first equation you get, in fact, you recover uh, this equation. So I'm writing the constant term. OK, so this is not surprising. So let's write uh, t, uh, the coefficient in t. So here you have x minus uh, twice. Right plus okay. All right, and then we can continue. Maybe continue. Maybe one more steps. So for the coefficient in uh, T two. twice x minus 2 t2. Okay, so here I really expand this, but you can also uh, using uh, use the differential and obtain this equation by differentiating. It's just because of my convention, it's not really what I wrote. If you do that, you don't have exactly the same coefficient. But it does not matter. You get same equation, and you can continue, of course, for the, if you really want e um, equations for the arc space, you continue. And if you want the finite jet scheme, you, the truncation just corresponds to forget the variable for j big enough. Sorry? Uh, I forgot some term. Two is not correct. Uh, yeah, this is maybe not correct. Yeah. Yeah, it's precisely what I'm saying. <laughs> if you differentiate, you get a two, but if I do what I'm doing, I have no two. Yeah, sorry. <coughs> yeah, 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 yeah. You're right. Okay, so I guess everyone understands that you could truncate eight if you want finite uh, jet scheme. All right, and as you observed, the first two equations here, which correspond to the first jet scheme, you, you recover, in fact, the total tangent space, in fact. 
So maybe I should start to say that J0 of x is isomorphic to x, and G1 of x is isomorphic to the total tangent space. And this is a general fact, in fact. OK, so now I would like to say a few words about arbitrary scheme, even if uh, arbitrary schemes, even if uh, in the lectures I will consider only uh, affine schemes, maybe it's interesting to say a few words about general construction. So for arbitrary schemes, we have the following result, which is due to Greenberg, I think. So here, x is uh, a, a scheme of finite type. Then I start here to, to state that uh, for m, a positive integer, there exists a unique scheme. So this will be the finite nth jet scheme, uh, such that for any scheme z, morphism of scheme from z to this scheme is the same as morphism of scheme from uh, z cross the spectrum. Yeah, maybe I write out of spec C. All right, so of course you can rewrite this uh, in terms of algebra, but here I, I decided to write in terms of scheme. And for arc space, you have that uh, there exists a unique scheme such that for any scheme z, morphism of scheme from z to z scheme is the same as morphism of scheme from z cross the spectrum of so the formal disk to x. So here I need to take the formal compression. The, the reason is that uh, this Algebra is different than the tensor product. OK, but of course, if you rewrite in terms of algebra, you recover what I uh, explained before for affine scheme. So OK, I, I'm not going to explain. But in fact, to prove this, uh, you can decompose this in two steps. So the first step is to construct such a schemes for affine case. And the affine case is very similar to what I have explained. We can go, we can do even more explicitly directly with that. And then the key point is that we can glue, uh, yeah? Ah, sorry. <laughs> Thanks, yeah. Uh, yeah, the key point is that we can glue along uh, arcs of open sets. So maybe I don't explain the proof, but I just mentioned this. <coughs> so idea. of the proof. So the first step is the affine case, and this we have already seen. And second step is a key, key point where I can glue. Um, yeah, maybe I write like this for the moment. One can glue uh, through affine, open affine, um, open affine coverings. So let me explain. In fact, uh, in fact, we have the following uh, result that if you have u open in X, um, and then look at the, I haven't introduced the notation, but together with the projective limit, you have a projection uh, from the arc space of X to, um, 
Yeah, that's true, but it is not what I want to use here. I rather want to use the finite truncation. Okay. This I already introduced. So um, here, uh, if uh, U is open, then the converse image of this open is isomorphic to the jet of U. Okay, so if you have already constructed this, uh, you have this. So for instance, if U is affine, this is well defined, and then you have this uh, property. All right? And so you can glue along a fine covering. Ah, maybe I have erased, but obviously this statement is totally wrong if U is not open. Think, in the, think of the previous example and take the converse image, for instance, of the point. Here it's quite big if you think of the equation, but here it just reduced to a point. So this is really important that uh, this is open. So, uh, so now if X is any scheme and you choose an affine open covering, then you can construct the jet. Let's say I, I explained for finite jet, but of course it's similar for arcs. Huh? of x by gluing the jet of u i through, through you have some, um, yeah, let's, um, how I can, yeah, so let me write this projection like this. So you take the converse image of intersection, and this is the same as the converse image of uh, taking with respect to J. And this is still isomorphic to the jet of this intersection. So then it makes sense. All right? So, so now, this means that if I continue with my notation, if I want to describe the structure sheaf of the arc space of X, I have the following. So we mark. So now if I take the structure shift over the converse image of such open. So here, pi infinity is my notation from the arc space of x to x, all right? Uh, this is the same as the inductive limit. Uh, yeah, sorry. Yeah. Of pi. Um, yeah, so here I have the same as this, and which is still the same as the uh, inductive limit of the arc of this. And then here, uh, this, is, uh, this, is, um, this is a coordinate ring of the arc space of U. So what I want to say is that uh, it is what I say at, uh, in the introduction. So the structure sheaf of the arcs of X is a sheaf of differential algebra, of differential algebras. All right. Okay, so... Um, yeah, I just want to mention uh, properties that easily uh, that are easy consequences of the definition, and then I would like to describe geometric properties of these uh, schemes. Any question? Yeah. 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 No. 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 Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Now, I, want I wanted just to connect to that, and of course, this is only for the arc space, not for finite jets, uh, not for finite jet schemes. All right, so just uh, I want to remark some properties. 
as a, an example. So, for instance, it's uh, not so hard from the definition to check that for any scheme x, y, the jet of the product is the same as the product of the jet. And of course, this holds also for uh, arc space. So, m is either a positive integer or either infinity. So, in particular, this is interesting because, in particular, if uh, G is an algebraic group acting algebraically on uh, X, then um, so so you have a, a morphism given by the action group, and this gives you a morphism at the level of arcs and also because the jet of a point, so in particular of the neutral element is just a point, then this defines, you, you can check, but this defines an action of the jet of G over the jet of X. Okay, so in other words, the jet of the group acts on the jet of X. Okay, so I leave as exercise uh, the proof of these two statements. So exercise. Right, so now in, for the last 30 minutes, I would like to uh, talk about geometrical properties of arc spaces and jet schemes. So, in fact, the, the philosophy and the motivations to introduce uh, this uh, object in theory of singularities. So, the philosophy initiated by uh, Nash is that uh, the geometry of jet scheme uh, should give information about the singularities of the scheme. So geometry of jet schemes uh, contains information about uh, the singularities of X and yields an uh, important invariant of the, of the scheme. So I would like to illustrate this phenomenon on some uh, properties, some results that we have in this, uh, in this period. So illustrating properties. Okay, so I start with a, a quite a relatively simple uh, statement. So let X be an integral curve. Then we have, for instance, that for all, uh, for all positive integer M, the fact that the jet of X, M, the M's jet scheme of X is irreducible is equivalent to the fact that X is smooth. So you see here that the geometry of this gives information about the smoothness. And 
Okay, now you can wonder whether this is easy to check, and I want to uh, convince you in, uh, on an example that this is in general, in practice, if you have equation, not so hard to check. So, so this, is a, this illustrates this phenomenon, and let me give an example. So for instance, I consider the following one-dimensional scheme given by y2 is equal to x3. So this is not smooth. So the smooth part is you have to remove zero, all right? So we should be able to find uh, jets here which is not irreducible. And uh, here, even the first step will lead to, uh, to, a, non, uh, to a reducible uh, scheme. So I compute the first jet scheme as before uh, using equation. So in fact, it's easy to describe the first jet scheme. It's given by equation. So, so this is the same equation, and then I differentiate. So yeah, maybe I have used a different convention, but it's not important. Yeah, again, here I'm not sure about the number, but anyway. So as we are already seen, this corresponds to the total tangent space. And now let's consider the projection map, the truncation morphism, to x. And let's first consider the converse image of the smooth locus. So if you look at the converse image of the smooth locus, so this means I fix uh, x minus one, uh, y minus one to be not equal to zero, zero, and I look at the point above. And then this is not uh, difficult to see that this is uh, uh, locally uh, trivial fibration over the smooth part. So this is a general fact, but what I want to say is easier than this. I want just to say that this is of dimension two. So this is a very risky locally trivial vibration over the smooth part. So this is a general fact for smooth scheme. So in particular, the dimension of this converse image is twice the dimension of uh, the smooth part, so that is to say two, all right? So now let's consider the converse image of the singular locus. So here it's even easier. So if I consider the converse image of zero, zero, then uh, you see that if I fix this and this to be zero, I have no condition. And so this is isomorphic to, uh, to A2. Sorry? Ah, sorry. Times dimension. Thank you. So this, there is no condition of the variables x minus 2 and y minus 2. So this is just isomorphic to A2. And so in particular, the dimension is still the same. OK, so in, in general, uh, you, you can compute like this, because on the smooth part, it's always locally trivial fibration. And on the singular part, in general, you are able to compute by checking the equations. And now the, the observation, which is also quite general, but this decompose as the converse image of the smooth part, and you take the closure. So of course, you don't need, in general, the closure, but I want to say here that we have two irreducible components. So in general, you can, for any scheme uh, M, uh, here for any M, sorry, you can replace here by M, and this still holds, and here you take the smooth part, and here the singular part. And this is uh, always true. And so here, because this one, for dimensional reasons, cannot be contained here, you have two irreducible components, which cannot be, of course, this cannot be contained here. So in particular, it's not, uh, it's not irreducible. 
And this is a general fact, so you can, in this way, in practice, check this uh, condition. And this is roughly the idea of the proof of this statement. Okay, so maybe I would like to give um, another sim uh, statement in the same spirit. <coughs> so, okay, there are several, but maybe, yeah, this one is interesting. Okay, another properties. So, assume that X is a complete intersection. Then we have that if this scheme is irreducible for some M, then X is normal. So here again, this is interesting because uh, testing on R space this condition you can uh, detect the normality of the scheme. And this is something interesting, the normality. So uh, I guess almost everyone is familiar with normality, but maybe, <laughs> maybe I just mentioned why uh, normality is useful. I don't give a, okay, normality for affine scheme just means that the coordinate ring is a normal uh, ring. But why it's interesting, for instance, it implies, so, uh, it implies, in fact, what I'm saying is equivalent for affine, but anyway. So, for instance, you have that the co-dimension of the smooth, uh, co-dimension of the singular part, sorry, so I remove the smooth part, is at least two. And why this condition is interesting? Because if you have the normality, you have that for any uh, scheme of co-dimension two, sub-scheme of co-dimension at least two, then a regular function on the complement can be extended to, to x. Okay, so this is an interesting condition and maybe I would like to give some example in the setting of uh, Lie theory. Maybe example and non-example. Ah, maybe non-example. First of all, the previous one is not normal. Not normal. Um, yeah, in fact, uh, to test the normality, yeah, maybe I, I explain a little bit why it's not normal, but you have a finite, so let's say x, you have a finite proper of uh, birational morphism. So namely, you send uh, T to T3, T2. And uh, this is not an isomorphism, uh, which is not an isomorphism. So I did not mention, but the normality implies that for any finite birational morphism like this, this should be an isomorphism. So if you find such finite birational morphism, which is not, uh, then the variety is not normal. This is also an interesting property of normality. So this is a, a non-example, and now, so this is a non-example. So now let's give interesting examples. So for instance, if I consider the first example I gave in this lecture, this was is normal. So this is easy because here the singular locus is just zero and uh, uh, also it's a complete intersection. And so you, in, uh, in the circuitarium, you have the, the two conditions. Okay, so here for experts, you probably recognize the nilpotent cone of SL2. And more generally, the nilpotent cone of a Lie algebra is normal, as everyone knows here, I guess. So nilpotent cone of a simple Lie algebra is normal. And also most nilpotent orbit closure 
not all, unfortunately, but uh, most of them are, are normal. Okay, so this is an interesting condition, and you can also detect this by uh, this property. So here I don't uh, explain in further details. I would like now to stay uh, even much deeper result due to Mustatsa, which is a kind of generalization of the previous uh, statement. So the following theorem. Uh, I'm always confused with T here. So the theorem can be stated as follows. So assume that X is a complete intersection. So in fact, you only need a locally complete intersection, but maybe to simplify, assume, uh, I assume this. So here by, sorry, I should say that here uh, I assume by variety here, I assume reduced and irreducible. Okay, and the statement says that the jet scheme are all irreducible if and only if X has rational singularities. Okay, so here again, this is an illustration of the same phenomenon. And uh, this is also a very interesting uh, class of uh, varieties. So in particular, maybe I should say that if X has rational singularities, X is normal. And roughly, it means that the um, structure shift here is the same uh, has the same cohomology as the structure sheave of any resolution of singularities. Uh, just to, to give you an idea, and here, so this is also very interesting, also in uh, representation theory. So here again, I would like to give example. Actually, all example here, uh, when nilpotent orbit closure is normal, it's automatically with rational singularities. So in particular, nilpotent cone, Yeah, this one, sorry, I forgot the main, uh, for any M this time. Yeah, sorry. But you can put zero because I assume, uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. sorry. I have a question, is it any M or all M? So all, all, all M, yeah. This is correct, yeah. For smoothness, it was also for all. Uh, no, for smoothness, yeah, yeah, for smoothness, it was for all. And for normality, it's for some, if I am correct. All I should mention is Mustatsa, but the previews are easier, so I don't put the name. But. So, uh, yeah, example of... Uh, no, 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 never infinity. Uh, all statement I gave so far, I, I will mention this. This is a good point. For infinity, our space are always irreducible. So this is, I will mention just after. So here, it's really a phenomenon that really concerns the finite jet schemes. And as I will mention, in fact, in some sense, for geometry, our space are a bit easier. The, the reason is that the ring of formal series is a domain and not the polynomial ring. So it creates some difficulty, which makes interesting the, the study for these viewpoints. So what I'm, going to exp what I'm now explaining is rather interesting in theory of singularities. It's a priori nothing to do with vertex algebras, but as you will see the degradation, uh, I will go back to something related to vertex algebras, but I do a kind of degradation. I hope it's of independent interest, but uh, I forget our space for a while. Yeah, sorry. I should have mentioned this. Um, yeah, so nilpotent cone and uh, normal nilpotent orbit closures have rational singularities. So this is due to Essling for the nilpotent cone and Panyushev for the more general case of nilpotent orbit closure. All right, so, so this is a very deep result, and Mustatra has used motivic integration to prove this. And of course, motivic integration, it's a culminate 
tid point of this uh, phenomenon that geometry of arcs should give information about singularities because it's an integration theory over the arc space of uh, variety. So, um, yeah, so uh, to, before I give an application to this result in uh, Lee theory, I would like to mention what Alberto, uh, uh, what is connected to Alberto's question. I would like to make some comments of what uh, happens for arc space. So, remark, but it's more than a remark. So, uh, so first of all, uh, as you noticed, if x is irreducible, this do, does not imply that the jets are irreducible. This is what we observed. But for arc space, we have the following result due to Colchin, that if x is irreducible, so maybe I state like this. Um, Yeah, in fact, uh, I can state like this. This one is irreducible if and only if x is irreducible. So here the situation is very different. Okay? So however, uh, however, for instance, for the reducedness, it's not so nice. So if x is reduced, unfortunately, this one, no need to be reduced. Of course, it's also true for jet schemes that if x is, not redu uh, if x is reduced, finite jets are not reduced, but here it's also true for arc space. So one example uh, obtained by Sebag is again this example. Sebag. So this one is reduced, but the arc is not. But this is quite a tricky example. I would like to give you as exercise an easier counter-example. <coughs> so exercise. So I consider the case um, x is just x, y to be 0 and show that The jet of the arc space of X is not reduced. So, can give some hint. So, here you can show that this one, this element, uh, sorry, it's Y here, is nilpotent in the coordinate ring of the arcs. So, this is a quotient of this by some uh, ideal, let's say uh, differential ideal generated by I, which is uh, generated by this. So in other words, I want to say that this belongs to the radical of this differential ideal, but it does not belong to the differential ideal. So this shows that it's not reduced. Hmm? Okay, um, yeah, however, has to, yeah, um, yeah, maybe I can mention this quickly. So, oh, we don't have, the radiusness doesn't pass through arcs, however, we have the following result, that the natural Uh, morphism from the reduced scheme associated to x. So here, if x is affine, what I call the reduced scheme is just the spectrum of the corresponding reduced algebra. Okay? Induced, induces a morphism as topological space. So an isomorphism, sorry. So I mean by that that the C point are the same. As the scheme is different, but the C point are the same. 
And the reason, it's enough to, with, uh, to argue with arcs, and the reason is that I give a quick explanation that if x expect r, so if I take a C point on, uh, on the, uh, a C point of the arc space, so that is to say a morphism from r to the ring of formal series, because, uh, because this is a domain, this factorizes through the reduced quotient. Okay, and then you get an arc uh, here. And conversely, of course, if you have an arc here, you, you get an arc here. So here's a key point as this is a domain. And so you don't have any chance to have the same result for a finite uh, jet ski. All right, so as you see for geometry, also the, the construction is very similar for, uh, with my viewpoint, but for the geometry, they are very different. Okay, so, so to conclude the talk, uh, I would like to give an illustrating application of Mustata results for applied to the nilpotent cone, which has importance in uh, Lie theory and in particular also in uh, vertex algebra uh, theory. So, uh, application of most data result okay so how as uh, as i mentioned the nilpotent cone of a simple lie algebra g is so in fact, uh, I, can stay, I can say all what it is, uh, is a reduced, a complete intersection. And it has sing, uh, rational singularities. So all this is due to constant for the first part and is linked for rational singularities, as I already mentioned. And so maybe here I should precise what is nilpotent cone as a scheme. So uh, here, my definition is a scheme associated with augmentation ideal of the invariant of the polynomial ring. So um, here I recall that the algebra of invariant is a polynomial algebra. where L is the rank of G, and PI are homogeneous um, generators. All right, so in other words, the N is defined by this equation. All right? So, so in particular, uh, Mustatsa's results uh, apply. So in particular, this implies that all finite jets scheme are irreducible. So in general, in the theory of singularities, you rather want to use the other direction. But here, in our setting, we use this direction. And uh, this was actually uh, conjectured by Eisenbud and Frankel. And this was the original motivation for Mustatsa result. They, they had this conjecture, and because uh, Nilpotent cone have all these nice properties uh, suggested that it's a more general result, and this led uh, Mustatsa to prove the more general statement. And their motivation was the following. Um, so, so, yeah, maybe I should precise that we, we have this, and uh, yeah, okay, so uh, maybe I, I mentioned that the jet, the arc space of uh, uh, the nilpotent cone is defined by the differential of this uh, polynomial. Okay, and the motivation was the following. So, um, so now I consider the, the quotient of the Lie algebra by, by the, the group G. So this is, by definition, the spectrum of the 
invariant algebra, all right? And uh, now we, we have seen that, uh, so this comes from the action of G on its Lie algebra. So I haven't said, but here I assume that G is the Lie algebra of some algebraic group. And as I have explained, this induced an action of the arc space of G over the arc space of uh, the Lie algebra. So in the next lecture, I will come back to this action and explain in more detail what it is. But here, we just have a, an action like this. And the, the theorem, which was proved by Eisenbud and Frenkel using Mustatsa result, or more precisely, using the irreducibility of all uh, finite jet scheme, is the following. So it says that the arc space of the quotient here, which is just a uh, affine space uh, because of the constant results that this is a polynomial algebra, so this is just isomorphic to AL, is in fact the quotient of the jet of the Lie algebra. So in other words, uh, this is so this is, uh, by definition, a priori, the spectrum of this. And it says that this is, in fact, uh, the same as the coordinate. Uh, this coordinate ring is the same as this coordinate ring. So the proof of heisenbud frenkel used Mustatsa uh, result, but this result was proved independently by Bellinson and Winfeld. and also a Raiz and Tovel using the different methods. So, okay, so um, I, I will come back to this result because actually uh, this result, and in particular this object, is deeply connected to the fagin frankel center that we have encountered in Serge's seminar talk last week. And I will give a, um, yeah, I will state something about, um, yeah, let me just mention this. So deeply connected to the fagin frankel center which is actually the center as vertex algebra of the affine vertex algebra at critical level. And uh, in fact, uh, this corresponds to the graded of this fagin frankel center. And this will be, so this will be an important example of Poisson vertex algebra. And I will uh, generalize a little bit the fact that the graph of this is this to the setting of W algebra, so probably in the last uh, lectures. So yeah, I think, so as you see, there will be, there was not so much vertex algebras, but from next lecture, I will go back to vertex algebras. Thank you. Uh, no, uh, irreducible. You need uh, all irreducible. Uh, uh, yeah. Yeah. Yes. No, but here for integral curves, uh, things are easier because. Uh, uh, complete intersection is almost uh, empty condition, so. Mm -hmm. 
In this make setting, smoothness is equivalent to. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, you mean for this? Yes, yeah, yeah. Algebraically close is okay and uh, characteristic zero, but. Uh, uh, many things that I have said are not true. Uh, for instance, Colching result is not true also. Uh, I think Ishii found the counter example. The R space might be uh, re uh, reducible if you go to character P. So, Many things I mentioned today are not true. Uh, of course, the differential algebra's construction still holds in positive characteristic. You just have to change a little bit the construction because if you remember, I divided by uh, something. But this is just technical thing you have to change, but this works. But for the geometry, uh, we, we have to be careful. Yeah. 